Hey, welcome back to Round Tower Restoration, everybody. My name's Chris Fisher. I'm sitting in my 1964 Triumph TR4. You can see here that I've got some more shiny new metal, battery box floor, some more parts for the firewall. Stick around, I'll show you what I've done. Thanks for watching. in there the, the tray is not too bad the little the little dip you can see how that kind of where the water would collect and run off but uh, towards the back it kind of gets worse and then in here you can see the the black sharpie that I've traced all the way up and then down and I was trying to save that uh, that welded stud there because it looks original but uh, I think I'm gonna go have to go ahead just due to the pitting and the uh, the fact that I kind of butchered it a little bit trying to get the battery support out. I'm just going to go cut how you see it there and just try to make this piece. So hopefully I don't regret this. I got all the spot welds popped on the back so no worries back there but we're just going to uh, kind of go for it a little bit. All right, well, here we go. See what happens. Now well, these things take some getting used to, and I think I, uh, I'm probably not not real good at it yet. You might have seen I kind of chewed that corner up, but they're definitely much easier to use and to get kind of going than a grinding disc is. I prefer this. So we'll keep going, more practice on it, but otherwise I think this uh, this thing is here is a, is a good deal. All right, so the very basic general outline here of this obviously needs a lot of trimming yet, and I want to see if I can get this thing out here, either just probably hack away that old metal, but uh, I want to get this piece formed up pretty well before I start to hack this thing out because I'm probably going to lose that small bend there. I don't want to do that quite yet, so we'll go ahead and... Uh, now just kind of dialing it in and start a little bit here, a little bit there, get uh, get that little bit of a bend in it, and hopefully get this thing ready to get uh, tacked in. All right, so that uh, doesn't look bad. The centerpiece hangs down a little bit further, which I knew it was going to, than the, than the new piece does. There's also a little bit of overlap where the new piece goes too far that way, so it's not real flush. But it uh, fits pretty well everywhere else. Nothing that a uh, little weld won't, won't uh, suck up the difference in. Pretty happy with the way that the angle came out there. I don't think I'm going to play with that now. I'll probably have to play with it in situ after I get it welded up. I think the angle starts and then it tends to flatten out as it kind of goes down. I'm not real sure that that metal was, was in pretty bad shape, pretty thin, so easy to bend, which I'm sure I did as I pulled it out. So now what I'll do is I want to get this little finger piece cut out here, and I'm probably going to come up the wall a little bit, and then down I'll have to form and make that. That'll be fun. And then I think before I weld anything in, I'm going to start looking at doing this base panel down here, try to figure out how I'm going to do the, um, do the ribs in there, the uh, that kind of stuff and the strengtheners. Remember, it, it breaks across the, uh, the the flange there, and nothing a lot. Of, you know, a bunch of vice clamps, vice grips won't hold together and everything. I don't have to do any uh, commit to anything now, so we're going to go ahead and just slowly build this thing up. Even though this might not look like it, it's a relatively complicated piece. You've got flanges, you've got the break in it, you've got a cut here for the flange. So I don't want to hammer it flat and bend it all out and then trace it. I, I could, 
but I've done that in the past and it just it doesn't uh, it doesn't always work real well to get it all back together for me so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of form it as I go so you want to make sure that you got it on the piece of paper where you've got the room right so it looks like it's okay this way and you line it up and then you turn it and all that but then you run out of room when you go to make that this flange here so somewhere kind of in the center of the piece of paper that you're using and just mold it around and move it where every place you got to trace to make sure that it's going to go ahead and trace out okay so we'll go ahead and we'll trace it and then everywhere that I've got a break I'm making like little guidelines for it flip it this way I'll flip it this way so I can get this flange and then flip it this way so I can get this flange All right, so there you should go. That's what this uh, hunk of metal should look like when I cut it out. And then the dotted lines in here, I'm going to signify where the metal is there, but it's bent at that point. And then I'm going to have to draw a straight line down it here once I find a straight edge to mark the bend in the major metal. So now I'll cut this out real quick, make my marks on it, cut it out, take it over to the hunk of metal, cut a relatively same size piece of metal out, and we'll start forming it up. All right, real quick before I cut it up, show you just how it looks after it's formed up. And it should uh, should fit in there pretty closely, and it does a little bit bigger, but that's all right. I'd rather have it a little bit bigger and have to trim it than too small and have to cut a new piece of metal. Got the rough outline of the piece here. Now the the trick is is what part do you break? Do you break the flanges? Do you break the long section? You know, do you do it on the metal brake? Do you do it on the vise? Whatever. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break the long section, so I'm going to break it and fold it in half, and then with the vise, I'll be able to bound, pound over the uh, the flanges in the right spot. The way I know that is because I can stick this in here like this, and then I'll be able to pound it over and stick it in like this on an angle a little bit, and be able to pound it over. This this lets me know that the vise will kind of let me do that. So. We're going to mark up that piece of metal and make sure I'm going to bend in the right spot here. And we'll go ahead and we'll bend it in half. Then we'll fold over the flanges. All right, as usual, I went too far. There is a uh, not quite a 90 degree there. I didn't notice that. All right, got it pretty good that time. Now to bend over the flanges. And again, the, uh, the angle obviously is important here, but this one will go straight over and then that one will kind of meet. So that'll be the, uh, since that's a, that's a perfectly straight over one, I'll do that one first. And then that'll help me determine the angle on this. Now the, the piece is actually uh, pretty close. It's a little bit big on this side, but that's fine. The, uh, you, gotta, you gotta watch too and account for the, the bend in the middle and the curve taking up some extra room. That's why I didn't mind too much uh, kind of messing up there and uh, an extra giving myself some extra metal so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of uh, straighten this up a little bit it's still a little wonky and get it cleaned up and bend the flanges okay. all right this is not uh, not lining up quite perfectly. I think uh, it's a little hard to get this bent over at a nice angle just because it doesn't, I can't get it into the into the vise all the way. So what I'll do, I'll try like this section. Yeah, what I'll, what I'll do is I'm just gonna trim a little bit. I'm not too concerned about this. Trim the angles up a little bit on uh, pick one, really, and then uh, clean it up. Got to take it over to the car real quick and make sure I'm not doing anything too gross. But I think it's just a matter of getting this formed up. Should be all right. You can see how the ankle kind of loses it just because, again, I can't get it in the vise all the way. So I was somewhat able to reproduce that uh, stud post. Here's the original one that I cut out. So I essentially just lined it up to make sure that it, that it fit in about the right spot. And it does. So that's good. And then uh, I just took a quarter 28 bolt 
shortened the length a little bit on the uh, grinding wheel and then rounded this off on the grinding wheel as, all, as well. And uh, so it's not quite as big a round and it's a little, stands out a little bit more. I probably can take the uh, flap disc or something and try to take that down a little bit, but I don't think I'm gonna worry about it. Instead of tack welding it on this side, what I'm gonna do is JB weld it. And I just, I'm uh, not sure that that's six one and a half a dozen another, but I don't really remember what goes here. And I don't want the weld bead to get in the way of maybe having to tighten a nut or something all the way down to being flush on this. So I'm gonna put the JB weld up in here with my orange stick, even though it's black. And hopefully that'll work. Now it's you know pretty cold in here, but the JB weld doesn't seem to have a temperature requirement. It says if it's less than 40 degrees, it just takes longer. So I'm gonna mix up a little JB weld here and just apply it. All right, get that clamped down and I'll let it sit uh, for a while. I'm not gonna obviously use it, but I would like to weld this thing in at some point, though I don't think that this stuff's gonna be in the way of that. Just like that, I'll let that set up. Started working on this battery tray piece here. Here's the original, obviously not, uh, not salvageable at all. And here's the one that's going in. So essentially, you're looking at it like that. And the ribs, I think what I'm gonna have to do with the ribs is use the, the buck and, and an air punch and drive them down. I know Make It Custom has done that. Fitzy, when he did his, and I'm sorry that I can't remember, but uh, I think it was Graham actually that recommended I watch Fitzy's videos where he restored an old Datsun pickup and I had seen those, but essentially he used the metal brake to bend them and, and make the ribs. And my metal brake just is not com compatible with being able to do that. So I'm gonna have to pound them. And I think as long as I put this flange in here and then use that air chisel, you know, and have this piece of metal hang over the buck like this, as if this, uh, the big, the brand new metal was the buck, I think it'll work just fine. So, but what I wanna do now is essentially kinda get this thing, start to get this formed up a little bit and roughed in and you know, without putting the ribs in it. The ribs are gonna stretch the metal, so don't expect the metal shape to change. And I should be able to put this front flange in. I don't wanna put the rear flange in until after I put those in there because I don't think it's going to, uh, I don't think it's gonna work with the, with the buck and, and having to deal with that flange. But if I can get this piece of metal cut at least pretty close, I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be okay. So obviously I've got all of this rib here. I don't know if these ribs go as far back as this one does, if they're all even. I gotta see if I can find some original pictures. If anybody knows or has pictures, uh, please, I'd appreciate if you send them to me. Roundtailrestoration66 at gmail.com if you guys ever wanna reach out. And anyway, so we're just gonna continue on with this and not try to uh, muck it up too bad and see what uh, comes out of it. Well, not my best work, but not too bad. It's, uh, it's on there pretty well. The, uh, the flange here in the front is a little bit long, which is absolutely fine. These gaps, however, in here, uh, a, little, a little bigger than I want them to be, especially this guy in here, and with all the pitting and everything, I'm just kind of hoping that I'm not gonna have too many problems. Over here, the gap is good, so I can probably steal a little bit from there and slide it over, but I'm not gonna worry about too much for now, obviously with the ribs yet to go in, that might change things a little bit, but like I said, the metal should stretch and not uh, not really deform so much. So if I have problems with that, I'm gonna have serious problems elsewhere. So I'm gonna leave this in and start fitting up other stuff and see if I can't get some semblance of what the final product's gonna look like here. puzzle piece this big piece right here I can't lift it all the way up because if you remember it's a little long so it's hitting, hitting the uh, top of the battery tray there so that's not allowing that to go down 
this piece in here fits okay, but the JB Weld is not uh, happening at all for this bolt. That JB Weld's probably about five or six years old. This little corner piece is okay, but I'm running into the shelf piece being a little bit too long. So I think if I want to weld stuff in here, the way that I want to do it is I want to get this piece in, and then I want to get this piece in, and then I think I can sneak this piece in behind that because if you remember there's a flange that's been up on the back side of that and that uh, the final piece would be the battery tray here and I don't think I don't think putting that in last matters. If you guys have opinions on that because remember I've got flanges going opposite directions I got this vertical flange here and then I'm going to have to bend up a flange here if you think it's going to be really tough to get that piece in here Looking at it, I think it might be. Maybe uh, maybe that shouldn't be the last piece. Maybe that should be the first. So if that's the case, then I've got some work to do because i got to knock those, those ribs into there. So no welding in this video at least until I kind of come through that, get your guys' opinion, see what you think. But uh, at least the pieces, parts are mostly there. Again, in this area in here, that's pretty sloppy, but I had a lot of cuts in here. So that uh, I kind of paid for that. I, I should have made, you know, made that decision earlier and not piecemeal it like this. So I'm going to have some some uh, metal to fill in here, either with weld or little itty bitty patch pieces. But otherwise, it's uh, I'm I'm pretty happy the way that's coming along, and we'll we'll continue working. Thanks for watching. Cheers.